your cat Some capsule toys or some other shit Well, I know just the place It's just up the road in the bad part of town, babe The owner's a freak But that's okay because they have the greatest jingle Happy New Year's, everyone. Welcome back into VG Emporium and a Happy New Year. And speaking of new, if this is your first time in VG Emporium, welcome on in. I'm your host slash proprietor of this fine establishment, Rage Cage. So now we're bringing in the new year with shop themes. Uh, number three here. And if any of you here that are listening right now were started listening when I started the show last year in January, uh, you may remember the uh, second episode I did was shop themes. So it's taken me a year to get to number three. But... Trust me, there's going to be more this year because I finally let just drop those shackles of the obsession of finding the shop themes that sounded like things you would hear in a combini or in a super macato or tepa chica, you know, like those. It doesn't mean they're not going to be showing up. It's just that I'm just not going to be holding everything else to that golden standard and going to be kind of a little bit more varied with my shop theme selections. But as you may have noticed, the track that we came in on actually fits that to a T because it is a remix of the shop theme, the golden pinnacle of shop themes and that is tomato mart originally from shenmue this is a remix by dale north called tomato tomato and for those of you that have been with me since the beginning or at least episode two you may remember that i started that episode off which was shop themes with tomato mart so what better way to start the year off than go back to this classic tune with a fresh spin on it and as dale said in his lyrics It is the greatest jingle you have ever heard. 
and it is a guarantee that you will be taking Ryo Hazuki back into that shop over and over again just so you can hear that tune, that delightful, delightful tune over and over and over again. And Dale's remix captures that spirit in there and adds so much more. And here's a little brain twister. Whereas Shenmue was released in 1999, which is uh, 24 years ago now, um, this remix was done in 2013, which is 10 years ago. Let that sink in. So now Dale North, he is a composer, remixer, arranger, just everything that you can imagine as far as like a musician wise. And as far as I could tell, he's been involved in the uh, VGM music remix scene since 2000 when he started contributing to Overclocked Remix. And he also has some game OSTs under his belt, such as Silent Horror, Dragon Fantasy Book 2, The Long Return, Sparklight, Wizard of Legend, Dreamscaper, and most recently, River City Girls 2. But there are many more on Bandcamp, and I will be linking that as well as his OC Remix account so you can listen to all his remixes because they're all really good. Oh, and I want to note that I did edit the remix a bit to um, have the loop of the uh, section of the, you know, the main tune before the key change. You know, because it's, you know, it's a really good tune and I like that loop and, you know, I wanted to have it while I play over while I talk to it because it's so good. And Dale does a really, did a, re did a really good job of just capturing the spirit and the, just the light of it. So now moving on to our next shop theme, it is definitely not of that konbini sound, but um, like I said, I've shaken off those shackles and we're going to be playing much more variety. So this is Shop from 3 by 3 Eyes, Seima Korinden, composed by Kenosuke Suimura. So that was Shop from 3 by 3 Eyes, Seima Korinden from the Super Famicom, composed by Kenosuke Suimura. And as I said, this is a little bit more of a kind of an RPG flair to it, not so much Konbini, just a standard shop. But if you know you were to switch out some of the instrumentation, give it a little swing, speed it up a little bit maybe, uh, add in some uh, you know, some horn stabs in there, you might got you some good little Konbini Depachika tunage there. Oh, but I gotta, I gotta. I gotta calm down on that. I gotta calm down on that. So now this game, 3x3 Eyes, same according then, is uh, based off the manga series, 3x3 three three Eyes. Wherein your everyday average teenager in Tokyo, by the name of uh, Yukumo Fuji, of course meets a mysterious girl by the name of Pai, who is the last of her race of the Sanjian, which is Chinese for three eyes, who all became immortal and some of them turn into horrible demons and Pai wishes to become mortal, but somehow through some strange incidents, uh, Yukumo becomes linked to Pai, thus becoming immortal, so they must travel the world fighting the last of the demon race to find a way for both of them to become mortal. And so this game covers that story in RPG form. So whereas you would meet other various friends that they meet in the manga and they all have various skills and magics and whatnot, so you know, hey, your standard RPG based off a manga series. And this game is actually the first credit for the composer Kenosuke Suimura. And he would continue on to do sound and compositions for, uh, just a note here, I'm going to be skipping uh, past some titles as well because, you know, there are many others, but, you know, just kind of getting like the big one. Fatal Fury 2, Super Bonk, Voltage Fighter Kalgeiser, uh, Saturn Bomberman Fight, Doki Doki Payachu, um, Vasara and Vasara 2, Samurai Showdown 5, Super Real Mahjong Dosuke, uh, Nano Breaker, Fist of the North Star in 2005, Dragon Ball Z Super Sonic Warriors 2, Rumble Roses XX, Guilty Gear Judgment, and his last credit in 2008 is Battle Fantasia. So a pretty good variety of uh, studios there, you know, Konami, SNK, Hudson Soft, 
Arxis works? Yeah, the life of a freelancer. So now it's time to get moving on to our next track, and this one is definitely uh, vibing in the right areas that I, I kind of want for my shop themes. This is Mysterious Shop and or Shop Secret from Fantasy Zone 2 DX by Manabu Namiki. shop from Fantasy Zone 2 DX composed by Manabu Namiki. And for those of you that are familiar with my tastes, um, I couldn't go without featuring some FM tunes in a shop themes episode. For I am, and forever will be, an FM junkie. And this tune, though not as energetic, does fit that vibe I'm looking for in my shop themes. And that is thanks to Manabu Namiki. So now where did this guy start? They started with Thunder Dragon 2 in 1993. They went on to do sound effects for Battle Garega. Sound compositions for Bloody Roars 1 and 2, Armed Police Bat Rider, did sound analysis for many of the Sega Ages 2500 series, one of them being for Fantasy Zone, which this game was first featured in. Metal Slug 6 was one of the composers that contributed to Odin Sphere alongside Hitoshi Sakamoto. Now jumping ahead a bit here, we're landing right on, oh, Half Minute Hero, The Second Coming, Yakuza 0, Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. A uh, gimmick, exact mix, was arranged, did a music arrangement on that. Dodonpachi, True Death, Exa label was the sound advisor, and we'll end off with Aleste Collection, where he was both the sound designer and director for this collection. So now Fantasy Zone. This is one of the quintessential Sega games. It is a cute em up, wherein it is a shoot em up, but everything is cute. So like the main craft that you're flying is uh, called called a Opa Opa or Apo Apo, depending on which game you're playing, and it is just this little aircraft with wings on it. And uh, when you get close to the ground, little feet prop out and you just walk around and stuff and you just shoot at these things that are overly cute and, and as you're flying around or walking around shooting these things, little uh, shops will pop up and, you know, this is obviously where this theme would play. You know, there's various other themes that are a little bit more, um, you know, kind of happier sounding, but this one, this is like, I think, an original tune for this particular version of the game, which, I should say, is a revamp of the Fantasy Zone 2, which was originally released on the uh, Sega Master System. MSX, NES, so like instead of having an original arcade port, it was just directly made for those systems. And many, many fans were upset because where's this arcade quality? So M2 recreated the game using the Sega 16 arcade hardware. So you could actually play this on that hardware or emulate it if you wish on MAME. And Manabu Namiki came in and arranged a lot of the music for the game as well as creating original tunes such as Mysterious Shop. And speaking of shop, it's time for the next shop theme. This is Habara General Stores from the game Contact, composed by either Masafumi Takada or Jun Fukuda.
that was Hibara General Stores from Contact, composed by either Masafumi Takada or Jun Fukuda, or could be both at the same time. And this totally sounds like if the Vinculin Gate from Killer7 had a shop in it just before going into down the corridor to the Coliseum to face off a New Heaven smile. But that is a story for another day. And as far as I know, there isn't any connections between this game and Killer7 or any of the other uh, Suda51 games, but that's as far as I know. That's right, Suda51, Grasshopper Manufacturer, the ones that are responsible for Killer7, No More Heroes, Silver Case, Chainsaw Lollipop, just to name off a few. And uh, yeah, they made a uh, little DS RPG. And uh, basically, uh, the way I can explain this is, what if Earthbound, but Suda51? So, um, seeing as this game was released on the DS, it of course had two screens going on, but the cool thing was that the top screen had had that Earthbound look, you know, really simple, just like pixelated art going on where the Professor, who is the character that kind of catalyzes all, or is like the catalyst for all this stuff going on, is up in his lab just kind of doing stuff, and then the bottom screen is all pre-rendered graphics, even like the character sprites and everything, and you're moving around, uh, around the fields and stuff, and uh, getting into real-time battles as opposed to turn-based. So, you know, there's visual clashing right there, and then the soundtrack is just all over the place. I, you know, as you can probably hear the shop theme here. So now this game, uh, let's see. So in the game, you are controlling Terry, not playing Terry, controlling Terry, because everybody knows that you are controlling Terry. The professor, Terry himself, all the characters, you are controlling Terry with the second screen using the touchpad and everything, because, yeah, they address you and everything. Like, the professor actually directly addresses you and tells you, Hey, do this, make Terry do this thing. And then you make Terry do that thing, and things happen. So, hey, a cool little suit of twist there, huh? So the basics of the story is that the professor is being chased by the cosmonauts, cosmic nihilist organization for terror, and crash lands on Earth and loses all his cells. So he enlists the help of Terry, who has just recently washed up an island, to find all these cells to then help the professor get off the planet and for the professor to help Terry get home. That's all I got for you on this game. But uh, moving on to our composers here, um, Masafumi Takada and Jun Fukuda. Uh, now, Masafumi I had actually talked about in my follow-up to the Masters of EGM back in June. But to kind of give you a quick rundown, he's been doing music for Goichi Suda's games uh, like since the beginning. So like starting with Moonlight Syndrome and then getting onto the Silver Case, Flower Sun Rain, uh, Shining Soul 2 he did music composition, uh, Killer 7, Michigan Report from Hell, Samurai Champloo, Sidetracked, um, this game, Contact, No More Heroes. He did a few Beat Mania games. Vanquish, Kid Icarus Uprising, uh, the Danganronpan series, a favorite of Rhythm and Pixels, Purnell. And his latest credit, World's End Club as Sound and Supervisor. So now Jun Fukuda has worked alongside Masafumi Takada for a lot of the um, Grasshopper Manufacturer games. And then uh, some of the ones that he's done himself are the Lollipop Chainsaw, Killer is Dead, Earth Defense Force 2025. He helped out with the Danganronpa uh, contributing guitar. Uh, Pokemon Duel Sound Effects Developer, um, Sign Mora X, Digimon Cyber Sleuth Hacker's Memory, Deaths Come True, and then his latest credit is Balan Wonderworld. And so there you have it. So now I want to apologize um, for this episode maybe single, seeming a little dry and maybe not as energetic as I, I usually am. It's just uh, kind of recovering from everything that's been going on this last month of December. So just kind of, yeah, just kind of conserving my energy and just trying to get back to tip top maybe i just need to listen to more fm tunes so i got this up next for you here this is junk shop from tokimeki memorial composed by the konami kukeha club
that was Junk Shop from Tokimeki Memorial, composed by Konami Kukeha Club. And the specific members are Mikio Saito, Seiya Murai, Miki Hakashino, and Hiro Noguchi. And this particular version was using the YMF262 sound chip uh, for the Windows 90X systems. Most likely it's 98. Now why specify that? Because uh, it's just a cool little fact. It's like, you know, watching the waveforms is just all over the place. You got 18, count that, 18 channels of 2-Up FM just going wacky all over the place, doing like that crazy um, dynamic channel switching stuff. It's fun watch. So now, Tokameki Memorial. I am not too familiar with dating sim games all that much, but in my ignorance, I do know that this game is a standard setter for the genre when it was released in 1994. Eschewing all the sexy bits and H scenes and instead focusing in on just like all the background stuff like statistics and numbers and like, you know, if you uh, spurn a girl too much, that's gonna have bad results all across the board for you for all the other girls. So instead of having like just a linear story where you're just going to scene to H scene to H scene to scene to scene to H scene, um, this one you actually have to focus in on like the numbers. You gotta quench the numbers and make sure that you keep all your girls happy so you don't have a bomb on your hand. And where does the junk shop fit into all this? I honestly don't know. But what I do know is that whoever made this song was definitely heavily inspired by the shop theme from Illusion City on the MSX. And which one of those members of the Kukeha Club is responsible for this one? I don't know. And I'm kind of not in the mood to go through all of them right now. It's too many names. I, I'm telling you too many names and too many things that aren't related to the things I'm telling you. Or they are related, but you get you get the idea. Perhaps another day I will tell you about them because this, uh, this game has a lot of good music, especially this version. I like it. So we're going to definitely be covering it again. So you may hear me talk about those folks eventually. And now in all of this... There's one thing that not many people really talk about when they, like, you know, talk about shop themes, like, you know, favorite shop themes or favorite shops. The shopkeeper. What about the shopkeeper? What about their theme? Like, sure, they have, like, the shop theme, but the shopkeeper has to have their own theme. And thanks to Joshua Morse, we have just that. This is Shopkeeper from Chipset Volume 2 by Joshua Morse.
Master Shopkeeper from Chipset Volume 2 by Joshua Morse. Because yes, there are so many amazing shop themes, but what about the shopkeeper? Because the, you know, the music that's playing in the shop, that's just the shop's music. You can hear that in any shop. But what about the individual shopkeeper that's within that shop, within a different town? What about them? Because yes, they have to listen to the shop's themes all day long while they're working. But then when it's the end of the day and they have, you know, they're leaving the shop, what music plays for them? Like, what is their theme? And thanks to this delightfully funktastic tune by Joshua Morse, we got it. For one shopkeeper, at least. Now, while listening to this, you may be wondering, what are you hearing? You're hearing FM sounds like a Sega Genesis, but you're also hearing sampled instruments like the SNES. Well, that is the magic of Joshua Morse's Chipset series, which there are six volumes of it, and it's actually up on Bandcamp as Chipset Complete. And uh, what it is is a you know mix of Sega Genesis FM and the SNES you know quality samples run through tape. So that's kind of like that little bit of that warmth and warbly sound in there. And it ranges from funk, New Jack Swing, jazz, and everything in between all those three. Now, I've played Joshua's music on the show before. Um, and I'm kind of starting to lose track of which ones those were. You know, I'm at 53 episodes. What am I supposed to, how am I supposed to, is just supposed to keep a list or something? It's like, uh, I'm just kind of doing this on the fly. I don't got no time to write a list. But nonetheless, go listen to Joshua's music. It's all really good. It's all just amazing, like chiptune, BGM, digital fusion, funk, just whatever you want to call it. It's all that good stuff. And, you know, the ones I would recommend you check out are, of course, Chipset, Waveform, Source, and the most recent thing that he's been releasing on SoundCloud called Chip Funk, which is a series of songs that are tributes to BGM classics, but done in the style of Chipset. So, like, this really super funky SNES Genesis blend run through tape. And, you know, I'm telling you, it's all really good. And that's the truth. And you know you can trust me because shopkeepers are also keepers of truth. Yeah, most of the time. And speaking of time, it's about time for me to wrap this up. And so I'd like to start that off with by thanking all of you to co for coming into VG Emporium and listening to my attempt at cobbling together an episode. Yeah, because uh, this one, this this episode is a little bit of a far cry from the first Shop Themes episode, which was episode 2 of VG Emporium. Go check it out. But hopefully as we get in more into the new year, um, things will get a little bit more fresher. And actually, I'm going to be having the next episode is going to be special orders because I have I finally have enough. Haha! <laughs> finally have enough to do a special episode, special orders episode. Ugh, getting a little too wongy there. And what's a special order, you ask? Well, that's a song request. So basically, you would send it in to vgemporium at gmail.com, or you could contact me on Twitter, Instagram, or even, like, Discord if you can find it. And send me a song that you'd like to have me play on the show, and once I get enough, I'll do a dedicated episode. And so, as I mentioned earlier, there is a Twitter and Instagram for uh, VG Emporium where you can, like, you know, kind of follow things as I update or send in your special orders, as well as you can find it on all your podcatchers, such as Spotify, Apple, Google, um, Audible, Amazon, even Stitcher. And there is a YouTube, but I haven't really been taking care of it because it's like, eh. And I have been your out-of-sorts host slash proprietor, Rage Cage, where you can also find me on all these social medias, such as Twitter, Instagram, as well as SoundCloud, where you can find all my original chiptune music I make. So once again, I'd like to thank you all for listening to VG Emporium. And remember, next week, special orders, and I got a good batch this time.